Good morning. Today we'll be discussing acceleration along an inclined plane. Specifically, this is the question we'll be investigating. Calculate the acceleration of the person, 80 kilograms, if they experience a force due to friction of 25 newtons. In addition, calculate the normal force assuming they remain in contact with the surface. So the person is on a sled, they're going down a hill, what's their acceleration? What's their normal force? The first step in any of these problems is to label the forces, specifically gravity, friction, and the normal force. Gravity always acts downwards. Friction opposes the motion. The normal force acts in this direction. Now why does it act in that direction? while well, normal in mathematics means perpendicular. In this case, perpendicular to the surface. Let's determine the force of gravity by using the formula mg. The mass is 80 kilograms. 80 multiplied by 9.8 is 784 newtons. Friction is 25 newtons, so we'll label that as well. And the question is, what is the direction of the x and the y axis? In most physics problems, the x and y axis point in the direction seen here. However, for inclined plane questions, we are going to rotate the x and y coordinate system. We're going to do it such that the x direction always points along the direction of movement. So the sled is going down the hill, down the inclined plane, the x direction points in the same direction that the sled is accelerating in. Now we're going to have to find the components of the vectors. Well, 25 newtons, we don't have to do anything with that vector because it lines up parallel to the x-axis. The normal force is a vector as well where we don't really have to do anything with it in the sense that it lines up parallel to the y-axis. The problem is gravity. Gravity doesn't point in the x or the y direction. So we're going to create a triangle and we're going to find the components. We're going to solve for fgx and fgy. The problem is we don't know the angle. So, focusing on this triangle for a moment, and if we do some math with that triangle, knowing that all the angles have to add up to 180 degrees, and we have a 90 degree angle in this area here, that angle is 75 degrees. Now, why is that important? Well, remember that this is drawn perpendicular to the surface. FGY points perpendicular to the surface. FGY is parallel to the normal force. And so that allows us to get this angle here, 15 degrees. Now that we know 15 degrees, we can solve for those components. Please note, the reason why we've drawn FGX in this direction is because it's parallel now with the X direction. Same thing with FGY. Once again, parallel to the normal force. Focusing on FGY, and recalling that the cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, the ratio of adjacent to the hypotenuse. Adjacent over the hypotenuse. Cross multiplying, we end up with 757.29 newtons. Now focusing on the x component of gravity, using the trigonometric ratio sine 15 degrees equals fgx over 784, recall that sine is opposite side over hypotenuse. For this angle here, the opposite side is fgx, and the hypotenuse is 784. Cross multiplying and working through the math, we end up with 202.91 newtons. 
and now we'll label those values in the diagram. At this point, we have all of our information required to begin the problem. We've labeled the vectors. So calculate the acceleration of the person, 80 kilograms, if they experience a force due to friction of 25 newtons. We're going to write an F net X statement. The F net X is equal to the force of gravity in the X direction. Force of gravity in the X direction. Subtract the force of friction. We do the difference. And recall that F net is always equal to MA. Solving for acceleration by substituting the mass, we end up with 2.22 meters per second per second. With significant digits, it would only be 2, since 80 kilograms only has one significant digit. Please note in the diagram the length of the vectors. If we were to draw this to scale, if this is 202.91 newtons, this would be significantly smaller at 25 newtons. You should adjust the length of these vectors to reflect the idea that in this case, friction is significantly smaller than the force of gravity in the X direction. Second part of this question was to calculate the normal force, assuming that the sled remains in contact at all times with the surface. For this, we have to write an F net statement in the Y direction. We write in the Y direction because the normal force acts along the Y direction. F net Y is the difference of the normal force and the force of gravity in the Y direction. A common student error is that instead of substituting FGY, students sometimes will substitute FG. Please be aware of that. Once again, F net is equal to MA. And the acceleration in the Y direction is zero. It's zero because we assume that it's remaining in contact with the surface at all times. This sled will not go up or down. It's not going to bounce along this plane. It's not going to bounce along the hill. Instead, it's going to remain firmly in contact with the surface. Therefore, the acceleration of the y direction is zero. So we substitute that value. And normal force is equal to the component of gravity in the y direction. That makes sense. These forces are balanced when the acceleration in that direction is zero. And so we label that in the diagram. I want to focus your attention to this idea that the normal force on an inclined plane is less than the force of gravity. What does this imply? Well, if we have an object and we weigh its mass on a balance, on a flat surface, let's say that object is 75.9 grams, well, on a hill, it's going to weigh less. Because balances, electronic balances, or any type of scale, they do not measure the force of gravity, they measure the normal force. So that's the implication that objects on hills or on an inclined plane will weigh less according to a balance. Now if you want to learn more about this, there is a video I've produced which outlines an experiment related to this idea of the normal force decreasing on an inclined plane. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.